I have one, uh, Dr. Nemechek again. We're going to talk about mood disorders and inflammation. So mood disorders, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, chronic PTSD, uh, all of these now, there is a, a growing consensus that uh, systemic inflammation and neuroinflammation means inflammation in the brain are strongly associated with both the onset of these disorders and the you know, continuation of these disorders. So that there's studies, a uh, good proportion of patients with depression, for instance, chronic depression, which we classically think of like a loved one dies and now you're depressed and you never come out of it. That a large number of patients have no trigger for any of these mood disorders. Okay, now I'd say with the exception of PTSD, but certainly bipolar and schizophrenia and depression. And it's because they can just kind of develop. Like we know uh, there are certain uh, cancer drugs that trigger inflammation. There are some uh, things like autoimmune disorders, like rheumatoid arthritis has a very high uh, degree of depression that goes along with it because of the inflammation that comes from the, your joints when they're inflamed. And so inflammation is a big player in this. Now, the part of the brain where you house your emotions, it's called the hippocampus. This part of the brain is replacing 90% of your neurons with brand new ones about every three weeks. Okay, this part of the brain can recover probably more than any other part of the brain. And what we're finding is certain drugs, classes of drugs like this, serotonin reuptake inhibitor, so like Prozac, okay, but all of them are felt to do this. Um, Prozac, aside from, you know, changing your serotonin levels and making you feel better in a short while, actually is an anti-inflammatory drug in the brain, and it looks like through the reduction of inflammation, stem cells are more active and the brain can repair itself. Because this inflammation is, what you're experiencing is actually kind of cellular damage. Now people say it's a hormonal thing. Well, that cellular damage can lead to this hormonal problem, but the cells aren't working right, okay? And those cells, the majority of them, are supposed to be replaced with healthy ones every couple weeks. And the inflammation prevents all of that from happening properly. So if you can lower the inflammation, you can repair the cells, the depression can actually go away and you can get off the drug. Now, if you have persistent ele elevated levels of inflammation, Prozac might not be enough, okay? Now, aside from Prozac, probably the best anti-inflammatory drug in the brain out of the serotonin group is called Luvox, or Luvoxamine, um, valproic acid, uh, also known as Depakote, uh, is is another drug that's being looked at. Lithium lowers inflammation. So all these drugs they're finding that they're having benefit in a particular way, and they're starting to see it's it could very well be because of the uh, inflammation reduction. Now, when patients come to me and we put them on the protocol. And usually people are coming because they have autonomic dysfunction. They got migraine headaches, they're lightheaded, they have brain fog, or they've got bad SIBO, intestinal symptoms, stuff like that. Many have associated chronic depression that either was triggered and never went away or there really is no trigger as part of this whole big inflammatory mess they have in their body. And if they're on Prozac or something for just, I want to talk about just depression at this point, um, I'll tell them once we start the protocol, so we'll reduce these inflammatory levels in their body and their brain by balancing the gut, the fish oil, the olive oil, use a little vagal stimulation to lower inflammation, and you combine all of that. The vast majority of people with chronic depression, you know, around the four or five month mark, they can start tapering off their drugs. You know, and I would say the majority come off their drugs, okay? Um, it's not a promise, everybody does, but a majority will, and many have been on them for 
years and were unable to come off the drugs. And I just think it's, we have this just huge inflammatory stress in the body and the brain just can't repair itself to make that go away. Because typically if you don't have inflammation, all right, and your loved one dies, you basically get this injury in your hippocampus that makes you depressed, okay? Now within one to three months, the physical nature of those symptoms of depression, they lift, it goes away because the brain repairs itself because it's able to, there's no inflammation. Now you're left with grief. That's kind of the software component of this. You know, that's never gonna go away really. And it, but the physical nature of depression is from this emotional injury. If you don't have inflammation, it'll go away in one to a few months. If you do have chronic inflammation, it may never go away. So that's how it all works. So you need to, if you're wrestling with things emotionally, uh, whether it's depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, or PTSD, I've had dramatic improvements or complete recovery of all, many of these, well, many patients with any of these conditions uh, over the years just doing our simple protocol. And it's just, I've said it a million times. I, all I do is obsess about lowering inflammation in people and then we just let the brain repair itself. Okay? All right. Well, everybody, have a nice day. Take care.